Alright, welcome back. In the last video, we tied up some loose ends. So in this video, we are going to start working on our menus. This is the menu you will be sent to as soon as you complete the level and collect the diamond. One thing you might notice is the first uh, few videos, or more than a few, I have not recorded my cursor on screen. I did not realize that until I had already recorded quite a few videos, but I have taken care of it. So from here on out, hopefully we will have a cursor. I feel like that makes it easier to see what I am doing on screen since I can't uh, physically point at anything. So if we come over here to our project panel and our layouts, I'm going to right click on the layout folder and I'm going to pick add layout. And here it asks us if we want to add an event sheet with this layout and all of our menus and title screen and everything is going to have its own event sheet. So yes to add event sheet. And here we are, our brand new layout. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to rename this in all caps menu underscore next. And I'm keeping with the naming convention of all layouts are going to be in all caps. So I will enter that and then on our event sheet rename this uh, lowercase e underscore menu underscore next. And we had created this uh, menus folder in a previous video so now we have something to put in it. I'm going to slide that into the menus folder and I'm going to slide this into the menus uh, folder in the layouts. Uh, we don't need to do anything with the event sheet yet so I'm going to come over here to the layout and I'm going to over here in our layout properties I'm going to select view project properties and I'm just going to highlight and copy this viewport size and then click on the layout and we can come up here and change the layout size to that size. Okay so this is the size of our viewport when we're playing the game. It is 360 by 640. And in our levels, you know, we have this dotted line up here in the corner. This is the size of our viewport, but this is the size of our layout. We get to see the whole level. In our menus, we are not going to have a large layout. It's just going to be this one screen. So we can keep it the same size as our viewport. And I want to keep uh, the same size of the bricks that we see when we're playing the game in our menu because we're going to use the bricks uh, in as a background in our menus as well. Over here in our layers, uh, I'm going to rename it to tile map underscore bricks. And then I am going to come over here to our tiles folder and I'm going to click on our tile bricks that we used in our level and I'm just going to drag that object out into the layout. There we go. So right away we have an issue. We have our painted on level. At this time uh, I have looked into this. I am not sure of a way to erase uh, an entire tile map that has already been created because we're just dragging out another instance of this tile map. I'm not sure if there's just like one key you can hit to erase it. If there is, I will definitely uh, put that down in the description or the comments. But until we find a solution for that, this is how we get around it. Up here in our tile maps panel, we have a dotted square and that is a selection tool. So I am going to click on it and with the selection tool, I'm just going to drag a big old square, say, like that. What that does is it makes a selection for us. Now I'm going to go over here and select the erase tool and come back and you can see my eraser is the size of our selection. And I can just click and erase the entire tile map. So I'm going to click the arrow to get out of that and I'm going to resize our tile map. And I'm going to snap to grid zoom in on our layout and I'm going to place this at 0, 0 in the corner and then just uh, it's okay if it goes over 
we can adjust this later if we need to to match it up. All right, let's paint something. Uh, yeah, we are back to painting tile maps. So I'm going to pick the rectangle tool and the background, the dark gray background. And I'm just going to cover our layout. And now I am going to create a border and I want it to be rounded off on the insides for sure. So we can really use this one, the one that's rounded off on both sides for the sides. So I am going to just paint all the way down to the side and do the same thing on that side. Then I'm going to take our, our main brown brick block up here in the top left and I'm going to paint, uh, let's see, I'm going to paint all the way across and just replace those top two bricks as well. So if we zoom in, you can see that it's, it's uh, seamless when we use uh, these bricks in these positions. And we have, we can actually go in and grab our left side end cap with the pencil tool and see it rounded it off on that side. And then over here, we can do that with the right side rounded off. Okay. And then I will pick our rectangle tool and our main brown brick and draw all the way across. And then with my pencil tool, I'll round off the left and then round off the right. Okay. Now with my pencil tool selected, I'm going to select a window and just to give it a little bit of aesthetic so we're not staring at just a plain brick pattern, I'm going to add a couple of windows, exit out of our tile map. Let's take a look at what we have. So our dotted line is our viewport and that goes along the left, the top, the bottom, and then you can see right here our brick pattern doesn't really match up with the width of our viewport. So to combat that, I'm going to center it. I am going to click on it and actually first I'm going to unsnap the grid and then click on the tile map and I'm just going to hit the left arrow key on my keyboard until it looks like it is centered up on both sides. That looks pretty centered to me. So uh, your X position for your your tile map position is going to be negative 12 and then we'll keep the Y at zero. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to lock the tile maps layer. And now we can add a few more layers. So I'm going to right click in the layers menu, add a layer to the bottom, and I'm just going to call this background. And then we can come over here and grab our tile background that we used in a previous video. In fact, I'm going to go ahead, if yours is outside the folder, well, let's just drop it in the tiles folder with the rest of the tiles. And then we can click on our tile background and drag a copy out. And this one does not have to be so big. So I'm gonna change the size 360 by, I'll say 700. Uh, I'll set our position at zero comma zero. And then here I can just, I don't know, make it cover the whole viewport. And uh, already I can see that we can't see through the windows. So over here in the layers panel, Let's click on Tile Map Bricks layer. And over here on the left in our properties, our transparent is false. So we want to make that true. And right away, you can see that we get some transparency there. So now I'm just going to move this until I kind of like that design looking through the window. This view is not going to move, so it's going to be a static shot. So there's not going to be any parallaxing. We can come over here to our background layer, lock it. We are done with that. Let's right click and add another layer to the top. We are going to need a layer for buttons. So buttons, let's add another one on top of that. And let's call this the uh, level underscore total. And this is just telling us this is the layer that's going to hold uh, our totals that we count up at the end of each level. Once you collect the diamond and complete the level, it will count up how many rings you got out of how many possible, and it'll give you your total time that it took you to complete the level. And that will display here. 
And then we're going to need another level to separate our text objects. So let's add another one to the top and call that text. So back on our layout, we are going to double click anywhere in the layout and let's come down here and add a sprite. We can place it wherever. And we're going to come up here to our load an image from file. We want the UI folder. So if we open up UI, we have a UI frame. Looks like a big black square. We're going to open that. And let's check our size. 280 by 150 is what you should have. And then we can set our origin point to the bottom middle. We can exit out of that. And let's rename this. I'm going to uh, call this UI underscore level totals and then another underscore and frame UI underscore level totals underscore frame let's position this where we think we want it to show this is going to be the background for our totals and we're gonna have some text inside here displaying our our level totals first off we know that we're 360 pixels wide so half of that is 180 so position X as one pixel off 180 for the X, 280 for the Y. Okay, that puts it up pretty high because we're still going to have a button down here, uh, some other things going on on the screen eventually. So we're going to need some text objects. Let's uh, double click on the layout and scroll down and get a text object. And I'm just going to place it right there. And I'll rename this uh, TXT underscore total gold and that's going to be our coins we're going to call them or call our coins gold so let's scroll down on our properties uh, we can reference our text to just gold semicolon and then i'm going to pick a different font i'm going with consolas you can choose whatever you wish and the size, let's bump that up to 18. And let's make it bold. And then change the color to white so we can see it on that dark background. And then our horizontal alignment is going to stay on the left. And our vertical alignment, let's make that right in the center. And then the origin is going to be on the left middle. So just left for the origin. And if we zoom in, you can see that little dot right there is our origin. We're going to match this up with some image points. Make sure we're, we have the right size set up. I'm going to change the size to a width of 178 and a height of, I'm going to leave that at 30. Let's right click on our gold text object and clone the object type place it right underneath it somewhere we can come up here and rename this txt total time and our size is good let's scroll down and change the text to time semicolon and everything else should be uh, cloned over so don't need to change anything we can place our text wherever we want and it's going to stay there we don't have to create it in code we can just place it and it'll be in the right place every time the layout is called up so I'm going to find a good place for our gold text I'm gonna move him in and maybe up a little somewhere I'm gonna come over here to position and clean this up I'll say uh, 98 for the X and 171 for the Y and then the time, I'm going to move in. I'm going to guess we can probably use the same X of uh, 98. And then uh, that 216 looks good. 216. And then there will be the totals we'll read out here. So let's start with the gold. What I want to display is how many coins the player collected. And then I want it to show how many coins were available so if there were 20 coins and you only got 10 it would say gold 10 slash 20 so I want to be able to count all the coins in the level now I could go through and count them all 
and then just put that in the uh, set text action in our code. But whenever we create another level and say we have 10 levels or 20 levels, you would have to go through and count all the coins and set that text differently each time. And of course there is a much easier, better, more efficient way to do that. So let's go over to our main event sheet and in our initialize main group, I'm going to add an event to that group. And I'm going to pick system on start of layout. Now we already have an on start of layout up here, but I want to run a loop to count our coins and I need it to happen at the beginning of the level and I can't put our loop in this condition because then it will affect everything else that we put in the actions. So we're going to make our own uh, additional on start of layout and then I want to uh, let's right click over here on the edge and say add another condition and I'm going to pick system and I'm going to type in for each and we want this for each and this is actually a different loop than we used in for our death system. A for each cycles through each instance of an object and that object is going to be, let's click to choose our object and we want object coin. Click done and then let's add an action and go to system and we want to add so type in add, add to and we want a global variable that is not on this list because we didn't create it so I'm going to cancel that let's come over to our global variables tab and let's right click and add a global variable and I'm going to call this coins in level and I'm going to leave it at zero so coins in level that's going to tell us how many coins are in the level back on our main event sheet let's add an action pick system and say add to we want coins in level and we want to add one each time our for each loop counts a coin and it's going to loop that action until it has no more instances of this coin and that's going to give us how many coins are in the level and then it'll store it right here in this coins in level variable and then we can access this value on our next menu. Let's hop on over to our menu next event sheet and I'm going to add an event and say system on start of layout and we want to set this text to read what our totals are. Earlier we created a, a coins collected variable and now we have a coins in level variable so we know how many coins are in the level let's say that number is 20 and then how many coins we collected while playing the level let's say that's 10 so we're going to use these two values so let's go to our menu next event sheet and add an action to the start of layout and let's pick our text total gold object and say set text and in the quotation marks I want it to read uh, gold like we had it set out on the layout so in all caps I'm going to type in gold semicolon and a space and then you're going to have a quotation mark and then the ampersand and I'm going to have this display the coins that we collected while playing the game and that variable as we discussed is coins collected let's put quotation mark slash quotation mark and actually between each action that we do we need another ampersand so we want gold in quotation marks ampersand coins collected ampersand quotation mark slash quotation mark ampersand and then we're going to put our coins in level this is not as complicated as I just made it but I wanted to make sure that I explained the whole thing. Let's click done and then back on our global variables we have another global variable called total time which we set up in our main as our time count. We said while is playing is equal to 1 
every tick will add 0.1 to total time. When we finish the game, we change this is playing to zero so it stops adding. And this total time still holds whatever time you ended up with. So we're going to use that to display the time. So let's go back to our menu next event sheet, add another action, go to our text total time object, and say set text. And in the quotation marks, we're going to say time, semicolon, space, and after the quotation mark, an ampersand, and then our total time variable. Okay, click done. So on the start of this menu next layout, it is going to calculate that and display it. We can go ahead and test that, but when we get up here and we collect the diamond, we go over here to our objects and we say when we overlap the diamond, that's when we collect it. It destroys it and does all this stuff and then it restarts the layout. So instead of restarting the layout, let's send it to menu next because that's where it's gonna go every time we collect the diamond. So I'm just gonna double click on this and I'm going to pick uh, go to layout and on this drop down, I'm gonna pick menu next. So over here on level one, I am going to unlock our player layer and I'm going to zoom in and move our spawn point up here so we don't have to do too much. So I'm gonna start out going left so we can collect a couple of coins first and it will still count all the coins in the level. So let's go ahead and play this and test it out. All right, got some coins, got two coins. That's all I got, three. And there we go. We have uh, gold, we got three out of 20 possible. And then our time was 41.6, but remember we had this problem before when we were counting time on the level itself. We solved that by adding the integer expression on our time counter right here. We put the int before our variable. So let's do that on our menu next event sheet. I'm going to double click and I'm going to put our variable in parentheses and then I'm going to put int before it. Okay, I feel like we got cheated out of a coin and I want to make sure nothing's nothing funny is happening so I'm gonna redo this. Okay, I don't know what happened that other time, I have never run into that. But there we go, we got four out of 20 and our time was 40. So if we see that again, then we'll definitely need to look into that. This is the second time I have created this game and I have never run into that issue before. All right, just a couple more things to go and this menu will actually be done. I'm gonna add a button. So I'm gonna come over here to our buttons layer and highlight that and then double click and let's add a sprite. Click anywhere and let's go up here and load a file and I'm going to pick this button blue. Open and this is a very large button, 606 by 239. We're gonna change that. Let's change a couple other things for our origin point, I'm gonna put this in the top left corner. There we go. And then make sure your bounding box covers the entire button. If it's all weird like this, just right click on a node and say set to bounding box. And then I'm going to exit out of this. And I'm gonna name it uh, btn underscore play because we're gonna use this button more than once and I originally named it play, so that's technically what it's doing whenever you hit next. It's, you're gonna continue playing the game. So let's work on this size. Boy, that is a very large button. Okay, in our size, we could change the width and the height and I mean, we could say 100 by 100 and you know, there's you a 100 by 100 button. But uh, I don't want to do it that way because we have another option 
that seems to be a lot friendlier to uh, pixels. And that is our X scale and Y scale. So I'm going to drop the X scale down to 22% and the Y scale down to 22%. And there we go. It's not blurred out or anything. It's not stretched. It's the exact same sprite, just at a different scale. So that is something I think is very useful. Okay, let's position this uh, somewhere in the middle and our origin points in the top left. So it's we can't put it right in the middle. So I'm gonna go to position. I'm gonna put the X at 113. The Y at, let's go 10 more than that, 379. 113 by 379. I am going to lock that buttons layer. Did I put this on the wrong layer? I did. So my UI frame needs to be on the level totals layer. So I'm going to, in the properties, change text to level total. So now it's on the level total layer. Okay. Then I'm going to move this text. It is at text. That's good. And that one's on text as well. So those are where they need to be. Okay, I'm gonna lock our level totals layer. So everything is locked except for the text layer. And I'm going to click and add another text object. And I'll put it somewhere right about there. I'm going to call this txt underscore next. All right. And then let's change some properties. Uh, the text, it's gonna read this because we're not gonna change it in code. So this is gonna be what it actually reads. And in all caps, I'm going to type N-E-X-T. And let's change the font. Let's keep it consistent with the whatever you picked. Uh, I went with this Consolas. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And the size, I'm going to go up to 22. I'm going to leave bold and italic off and change the color to white. And then our horizontal alignment right in the center, vertical alignment right in the center, and our origin right in the center. Then let's come up here to our size. Let's say 80. Actually, the height looks good. So 80 by 30 is a good size, I think. Since our origin is right in the middle, we can put our X to 180. And then our Y, I'm going to put it at an even 400, see what that looks like. That's what I'm going to go with. So a position of 180 by 400 and a size of 80 by 30. I'm done with that for now. I'm going to lock that so I don't mess anything up. This is what our screen is going to look like. I'll play it. That's what it's going to look like. It's nothing fancy, but it gives us a starting point. And you saw that it read out 0, 0, and 0. So the code is working. Let's go back to our menu next event sheet. If you notice our color scheme, I had uh, kind of forgotten about that. So I'm going to uh, right click on our menu layout and change the tab color to, I think we had that yellow color or I had that yellow color. Uh, text is black. That's good. And then our event sheet color is what I just did a solid black, right? Mm, maybe. Color text to white. This really helps me knowing that my layers and my event sheets look completely different. There's a lot of contrast there, and that's why I do that. Okay, so on our menus next, I'm going to set up the what happens when you tap the next button. I'm going to create a group, and I'm going to call this next button. And I'm going to add an event to our next button group. And in our input folder, we have our touch object. We can add that. And I'm going to say on tap object. And that object is going to be our button play. And when you tap on the button, eventually it's going to, we'll have it set up to take you to the map. Until we get that created, let's just send it back to the first level. So I'm going to go to system and go to layout and I'm just going to leave it at layout one or level one. One last little thing we got going on here. 
Uh, in our functions event sheet, we have our fade group, which has our fade in and fade out. I have this set up so we can use it throughout the game whenever we want. It adds a lot to what the player sees visually. When this menu is called, I want it to fade in. And then when we hit the next button, I want it to fade out. So over here in our layers, let's right click and add a layer to the top. Let's call it fade. And then with that layer selected, let's drag in an instance of our tile fade. And we can just make sure that it covers the whole uh, dotted line area. And then we can actually lock that and turn it off in our layers so we don't have to see it. But it is still there. It exists. And because it exists there, we can go back to our menu next event sheet. Up here on, on start of layout, we can add an action, get our functions, and call our fade in. And let's just do half a second. So 0.5 as our fade time. And I'm going to leave it right there because I want those totals to be totaled and that text to read that before we start our fade in. Even though it all really kind of happens right at the same time, this will happen first and then the fade in. And that's what I want. So once we tap the button and we go to a level, I want to fade out. So let's add an action, go to functions and pick our fade out. And uh, why not just half a second again? We actually run into an issue here. What's happening is as soon as we tap that button, this action is called. And that is going to immediately send us to level one. This is not even going to take place because we will have already left this layout and we will no longer be on this event sheet. So if we want to see the level fade out, we have to wait for this to play out. Drag the fade out above our go to level. And then I'm going to add an action system wait. And I'm going to wait that 0.5. And I'm going to move that above the level. So it's going to start the fade. And we're going to wait that amount of time for it to fade. Then we'll send it to the level. And then we have yet another issue. As long as this is true, this will happen. So if I tap on this and I keep tapping on it, it's just going to play all of this over and over again. So we're going to create a variable that is going to help prevent that from happening. And this variable is going to be very useful because we're going to be able to use it throughout the rest of this game. So let's hop on over to our global variables sheet. And I'm going to right click, add a global variable. And I'm going to call this touch active. And it's going to be a 0, 1 value. So I'm going to leave it at 0. And what this is just means for us is that whenever this variable is changed to a 1, it means that we have made a touch input. Back over to the menu next sheet. And let's add a condition here. So I'm just going to double click in this area. And I'm going to say system uh, compare variable. I'm going to pick touch active. And if it is equal to zero, that means no touch has been detected. Then you can run this code. But once you touch it, we need to change it to one so that this isn't true and none of this can be done. Let's add an action. Go to system, uh, set value. And we're going to set the value of touch active to one. And we'll drag this to up to the top of this block. So that is the very first thing that's going to happen. As soon as you hit that button, you will no longer be able to hit the button again, and all of this can play out. So once this variable has been changed to 1, whenever we come back to this menu, this variable is still going to be 1, and we won't be able to uh, tap our next button. So if we say on the start of the layout, every time this layout starts up, every time we come to this layout, if we set this back to 0, we'll be able to uh, touch the button again. So let's go ahead and say system set value and change our touch active back to zero. And that should solve all of our problems. So let's go ahead and 
test this out on level one. In fact, I moved my player back. I don't know why. I'm going to move him back up here. And I'm going to play. There we go. And our coins are counting correctly. That's good. We won the level 4 of 20. Our time was 40. And it I don't know if you noticed, but it did very subtly fade into this uh, screen. So I'm going to hit next. And it subtly fades out. And then we do the start level function, which has its own fade in there. And there we go. And it did it again. It only counted two coins. I'm going to have to look into that and see why that did that. I have not run into that yet. Everything else is working. And I am going to send my player back to the bottom. And then I'm going to lock the layer. In the next video, we are going to make another menu. And this one won't take as long because we're going to use our menu next as a template. So that is it for this video. I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to save.